Hello, hello. This is a vacation special. And I'm so happy to do this for you. And uh, so you can study during your vacation since you have some free time <laughs> and listen to me. <laughs> Hope you're having a good time. Um, okay, so what we're going to be doing and we're going to go over today is the uh, brainwave pattern therapy. Um, but I want to start off with a little bit of um, theory so you can understand better. Let me share my screen first, though. A moment. Okay. There we go. Okay, so here is my uh, screen. That, um, yeah. Okay, here we are. Here is the brainwave pattern therapy. But let me go over some theory for you first. Uh, okay, as you know, people suffering from chronic stress, anxiousness, often find themselves um, in, a diff in difficulty to think positively, have happy thoughts, and they live in a constant state of worry and overthinking. This can lead to development of physical symptoms like headaches, for instance. Okay, their response to stress and anxiousness becomes habitual to the brain and causes the brain to develop patterns. Often this can lead to brain reducing its ability to calm itself in its usual manner. And chronic stress on the brain can have a very dramatic impact on your brain waves. Your brain is a miraculous organ. Okay, with complexity that reaches far beyond what's visible to the naked eye. In fact, much of your brain activity comes down to waves of electrical energy that flow through the brain tissue, much like a wave in an ocean. When these brain waves are balanced and working in harmony, your body and mind flow through states of consciousness and unconsciousness easily and naturally. When your brain waves are disorganized or out of balance, the impact can be felt throughout the mind and body system. That is why one of the most important starting points when working on your device is working the brain and brainwave training in order to relax your client from the beginning. Your brain produces five types of brainwaves. Okay, and they are depicted here on the left side of this panel. Um, it's the alpha, beta, delta, gamma, and theta. Okay. Alphas are associated with the meditate mediation and a sense of calm and peacefulness. Beta is associated with high frequencies and can cause agitation and anxiousness. Deltas are produced at night during sleep and aid in producing hormones that are essential to helping and repair the brain and the body. Gamma are the fastest of brain waves, okay, and it's uh, and they relate to simultaneous processing of information from different brain areas. Gamma brain waves pass information rapidly and quietly, and the most subtle of the brain wave frequency, the mind has to be quiet to assess um, access uh, the gamma waves. Thetas instigate the release of GABA, which balances the brain by inhibiting over excitement. It is the calming or peacemaker chemical in the brain. You need GABA to induce relaxation and reduce stress and anxiousness. So that's with theta. So here in our device, this panel uh, is the older electroencephalography, in short, we know as EEG, uh, measuring the electrical reactivity in the brain through the head harness uh, while also doing brainwave training through the waves specified here. Um, of course, we have the newer EEG that we uh, access through the main panel. Um, okay, but today I want to focus here on how to use this panel uh, through the electrophysiological oscillation and its concept for your better understanding. Okay, so we access this panel through the um, electrophysiological oscillation option, or again, we can access it through the universal biofeedback therapy 
okay, the same way and by pressing the electrophysiological oscillation. So, and clicking on the brainwave pattern. The EEG provides us with information measuring the waves varying from frequency, amplitude, and shape within, okay? We have over 100 million neurons which communicate with each other through the electrochemical signals, neurotransmitters, okay? Your brain contains these 100 million neurons which are nerves, cells that act as messengers connecting and communicating with each other. As these neurons fire their messages, it generates oscillations in your brain, known as brain waves. These waves of communication are electrical voltages. They're also known as neural oscillations that have a rhythm and a repetitive pattern. These waves create various potentials either excitatory postsynaptic potential or inhibitory postsynaptic potential. And these potentials is what is generating the EEG as a sum and a constant change of neuron potentials. And they create those waves, right? The electrical frequencies that we pick up in the EEG. The reactions that come up in this panel inform us of disbalance of waveforms. So we're, what we're looking for are the highest numbers. Highest numbers uh, indicate to us the disbalance or disharmony in that issue, of course. The highest number that we do want is the normal. Okay, that is what we're looking for. Let's go one by one and see what each of these items mean. The role of alpha wave. The, the role of alpha waves are very, very important. When alpha oscillations are prominent, your sensory input tends to be minimized and your mind is generally clear of unwanted thoughts. Okay. Therefore, if alpha waves come in disbalance and, brain, and the brain is out of balance, a person may be experiencing anxiety, insomnia, and depression. So when you have a high reaction here, it means that alpha is in disbalance and they are probably experiencing anxiety, insomnia, or depression. If the waves, if your alpha waves are associated with calmness and relaxation, you're out of power and never have a chance to become dominant, your mood will likely deteriorate. So without relaxation and sense of well being, anxiety will spike, your sleep will suffer and depression will settle in. By stimulating alpha waves, you obtain relief from anxiety, insomnia, and depression, and possibly even pain by restoring the balance in your brain's electrical patterns when you send alpha waves. The beta and the gamma, but I will uh, explain beta and gamma separately. First beta. Beta brainwave state is your alert and conscious active thinking brain. These are predominant brainwaves present during your waking day and when you're engaged with life actively thinking, focusing on the task, problem solving, or learning a new concept. Low beta brainwaves are associated with more introverted, quiet, and focused thought. Mid-range beta is associated with increased energy performance, actively figuring out things perhaps, even a little bit of anxiety. But when in, when in disbalance, beta is correlated with stress and anxiety and high energy and too much arousal, over arousal. So when this number is highly reactive, it is definitely high stress and anxiety and over arousal. Gamma is also closely related with beta. Uh, again, it is a state of alert, conscious, active thinking. Um, it's the fastest type of brainwave and related to simultaneous processing of information from different brain areas and has been associated with higher states of conscious perception. High levels of gamma activity in your brain are correlated with high IQ compassion, memory, and overall happiness. However, if it is out of balance or low, it is associated with attention deficit, inability to focus, and a poor memory, 
learning difficulties and impaired mental um, processing. So again, when this number is high, the beta and gamma, it's associated with all this, the high stress, learning disabilities, etc., attention deficit. Let's go to the theta now. The theta is a brain wave that is still clearly not fully, fully understood. It's a number of investigators have suggested that it may be related to learning and memory as well. Observations that support this concept include the fact that theta modulates long-term potentiation. It's a type of synaptic plasticity that is widely believed to be a form of physical basis for memory. And the presence of theta correlates with performance in several learning tasks. The theta rhythms are found in the hippocampus, the brain. So what are theta waves associated with? Theta waves uh, are present when you're daydreaming or fantasizing or commonly associated with creativity and intuition. Uh, they are associated with reduced consciousness and most active during daydreaming or asleep. The presence of these brain waves indicate deep relaxation, dream state in sleep, let's say, or even moments in the day when your active mind can shut off, like when you're performing automatic tasks, like brushing your teeth. Um, excess lower frequency of theta is commonly associated with ADHD as the brain wave can make you feel scattered and unorganized and unable to concentrate. Um, so when theta is high in reaction, uh, we need to, one moment, because <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, so, um, I'm also on vacation here <laughs> and I have my little dog next to me. Apparently, she wants some attention. <laughs> Sorry for that uh, uh, disruption. Okay, so uh, theta, theta. Uh, when it is reacting, reacting in high up here, um, it's associated with ADHD, okay? And uh, a person may feel scattered or unorganized or unable to concentrate. Okay, so it's also associated uh, theta with the enhanced memory and creativity and well-being. So, you know, when it's reacting, there is an issue there. Uh, delta for insomnia. Delta waves uh, are very essential for restoration and rejuvenation. Delta brain waves are the slowest of all the brain waves, and uh, their frequency ranges from 1 to 4 hertz. Delta brain waves are most active during our sleep, uh, dreamless, dreamless sleep, though, whereas the theta was with dreaming state, okay? Delta waves are with dreamless sleep and known to acti be activating healing and regenerative states, okay? Excessive delta during waking hours uh, can make it difficult to concentrate, Okay, so again, it can be associated with ADHD if it is too reactive, or um, it can also be um, associated with brain injuries and some psychological states of depression as well. Um, adequate delta brainwave function is necessary for proper rejuvenation and revitalization of the brain, and it's necessary for proper immune function, sleep, and healing. Uh, immature slow thought. Um, this is not generally seen in the uh, five basic brain waves, but they have added it here uh, because immature and slow thought pattern, uh, you know, has uh, different um, ideologies and um, uh, can include possibly sedative medications, metabolic encephalopathy, toxic encephalopathy, cerebral infections like meningophilitis or, uh, you know, deep line, midline brainstem structural liaisons. So that is another reason why we have that option here. If, if it's reactive, 
it can be due to those reasons. Um, so when these frequencies are all out of balance, the function of your brain and central nervous system may become impaired and lead to a spectrum of issues. Depending on which type of brainwave is either under or overreactive in general, disbalance, some of the side effects that we may see are depression, anxiety, hyperarousal, ADHD, as I said, impaired learning, poor memory, social withdrawal, impaired encoding of sensory information, uh, confusion, inability to concentrate, and insomnia and poor ability to sleep. As we know through the EEG, we can pick up various abnormalities in the brain waves or electrical activity of your brain. So we can pick up brain disorders, liaisons, let's say, uh, rapid spikes depicting seizures and epilepsies, slow EEG waves depending on the location and um, may depict up liaisons from tumors or strokes. EEG gives us information about <clears throat> brain trauma, drugs, drug intoxication, etc. So keep in mind certain factors or conditions may interfere with readings of the EEG test. So, you know, have this in mind that uh, if a person is fasting or they have low blood sugar levels, this may um, uh, um, interfere with the results of the EEG. Body or eye movement during the testing can interfere with the results of the EEG as well. So you don't want them to be watching TV, let's say, or having their eyes open while you are start doing this or testing them, okay? Lights, different bright lights. Uh, certain medications and sedatives may also interfere with this uh, type of training. Drinking caffeine, too much coffee or Coca-Cola or, you know, caffeine in general. Also, on the headband, if uh, a woman, let's say, has too much makeup, hairspray, oily skin, it's not clean, uh, it may interfere with the results of the EEG. So keep that also in mind when you are testing or treating a person with uh, brainwave training and the results of these for reactions. So let's one by one also go into this list here on the right. Cerebral dysfunction. Uh, when this comes up high, we're looking for high numbers, whatever high numbers are reacting. Uh, the cerebral dysfunction causes balance problems and gait disorders along with difficulty in coordination. Uh, they may result in ataxia, uncoordinated movements, imbalance, uh, speech problems, visual problems, vertigo as well, you know, dizziness, etc. Uh, local slow waves, the location of slow waves could distinguish between sluggish and impulsive behaviors, between mind wandering and mind blanking. Our results show attentional collapses, share a common physiological origin, the emergence of local uh, sleep-like activity within the awake brain. There can be a variety of causes which may, may need further investigation into this. Uh, yeah, because, um, you know, some of these items may overlap with the uh, epileptic forms as well or, you know, uh, other issues. So they may need some investigation either through the matrix or further examinations that they may do, maybe an MRI or etc. cetera. Uh, the next one. Uh, ampl amplitude disorder corresponds to frequency fluctuations and disturbances, spikes, etc., that may depict various uh, issues as well, just as uh, the epileptic form, it's this, those spikes that are in the EEG. Epileptic forms, on the other hand, uh, may not be, they may be non-epileptic abnormalities or epileptic activity, okay? Um, it has been recorded uh, that children or clients with neurological and behavioral problems may have ele uh, epileptic forms. 
uh, even speech delays, cerebral palsy, autism, etc. Uh, they can, may come up with a uh, reaction in the epileptic form. Uh, does it mean that the child or a person has epilepsy, but there is a, a neurological issue? Uh, about 2% of normal school-aged children come up with epileptic uh, forms. Um, normal EEG does not exclude epilepsy, on the other hand, too. And epilepsy doesn't include uh, the normal EEG, it's vice versa. So uh, it's uh, difficult, and it does need an experienced pediatric um, EEG specialist to uh, go over that, but it does depict some issues and some kind of epileptic forms because there are so many different epileptic forms. I mean, there are spike waves, fluttering eyes, uh, hip arrhythmia, um, central temporal spikes, photoparoxysmal response, you know, from, you know, bright lights, etc., and provoking, um, you know, stimulus seizure stimulation. A small spikes that may even, um, you know, cause those blankness that I described below. Uh, set within seconds, a blankness. Um, again, a an, next one is general asymmetry indicates neural and anatomical differences between the left and the right side of the brain. Uh, it's although the left and the right hemispheres of our brain develop with a high degree of symmetry at both the anatomical and functional level, it has become clear that subtle structures differences between the two sides can affect cognitive tasks. So a general asymmetry has been correlated with cognitive processing. Okay. Uh, injury profile. Injury profile can give us some information of some kind of brain injury from a stroke, possibly a mini stroke, epilepsy, brain injury from an accident, a concussion, whatever, you know. Uh, then there's the bila bilateral synchronization. It reflects neural activity of the brain and cognitive abilities again. Uh, it has, it's very similar with a general asymmetry, but also the deep brain asymmetry. All these can overlap and are similar. Uh, it gives us the deep brain asymmetry, gives us again the human neuroanatomy brain asymmetry. Uh, it, uh, it's, it gives us two distinct findings. Uh, the neural anatomical differences between the left and the right side of the brain, but also the laterized functional differences in the brain function, which control motor, perception, behavior, memory, emotion, speech, language, etc. Okay, so all these reactions may give us some idea of what's going on with the person, child, or client. Personality dysfunction. Okay, this EEG uh, reaction can, get, can depict an emotional instability personality disorder especially for those possibly at risk for, you know, even a tendency for, let's say, suicide when they're emotionally aroused or, you know, depression, etc. Attention deficit. Um, this is the most robust EEG feature associated with ADHD is elevated, is an elevated slow wave form, which, again, is associated with this one up here, slow waves but also with um, a decreased power of the fast wave of beta. So if, if we have attention deficit and beta is also reaction, reacting and also slow waves, you know, there's an issue there of ADHD, definitely. Uh, sometimes um, the results of people with ADHD do have also epileptic, some type of epileptic uh, form coming up as well. So with all this being said, this is a brief introduction to EEG and neurofeedback. And um, let me show you how this panel works. But before we go into it, we always have to remember that our clients should stay hydrated. They should be well hydrated. Remember that our brain is 90% water and water is 
essential for a good conductivity. Okay, mineral balance, they should eat well and have a good mineral balance if needed. Um, they should take some supplements as well because it helps with the conductivity of, uh, you know, the electrical conductivity of the brain. And of course, sleep is essential. Quality of sleep helps to recharge the battery of our brain. And so uh, electrical charges can be maintained. These are three basic issues. Uh, so remember when you're also doing brainwave training to also emphasize on this because no matter how much brainwave training you do, if they don't do these in their daily life, um, it shall be an issue. Okay. And you'll have better results if you do uh, um, focus on these things. So let's see how this works. The first thing that we have to do is either you can start with pressing start without pressing anything here and let the EEG run. Or as I usually do it, I like to press here alpha and normal. Why do I do this? The reason why I want to Although I'm also measuring, remember our device measures, but it also sends frequencies. So at the same time, I would like to also relax the client, put them in an alpha state, okay? Because you can never go wrong with sending alpha waves and, you know, pressing for the normal. We want the waves to be normal. So while we're also measuring and getting our information, we are also sending these um, this is our intention for normal treatment and also for alpha waves to be sent. So let's go ahead and start. Okay, and let's see what comes up. Our object are, is for the reactions here to be uh, as normal as possible. Remember, our normal range within the matrix is always around 85. So anything over 90 or everything over 100 is reacting. And the same with the left-hand uh, column with the issues here that uh, may come up with the EEG. So our object here, our focus is uh, to have the normal reaction, the highest number. Let's see what comes up. As you can see, we're working on the nucleus, our newest device. So look, um, what is this telling me? This is telling me that the highest number here on the left side is 108. No, 111, local slow waves. So there is an issue with local slow waves uh, with some kind of injury profile some kind of, you know, left and right asymmetry of the left and right hemisphere. So cognitive issues are coming up and amplitude disorder. There's not enough. Um, it's off. It's, it is an imbalance, the amplitude, the frequency in the brain. On the left side, uh, we see a reaction of theta. So we need more theta. Alpha is borderline theta and delta for insomnia. Let's see reasons, possible reasons come up here on the right side, vitamin deficiency pattern. Did, what did I say before? Some of the basic is mineral and vitamin deficiency. You know, minerals are very, very important uh, when uh, for the brain, for the conductivity of minerals, and of course, vitamins. Vitamins can also be, you know, maybe they're fasting, maybe they're not getting, you know, enough blood sugar, something's going on there, and it's coming up two times, the vitamin here, and amino acids, there we go for GABA, and, you know, all sorts of amino acids, remember, they're the building blocks of the neurons, so uh, this is also very important, again, and there's also other things coming up, emotional, obsessive, environmental, past trauma, could be the injury, past trauma, or psychological, but injury is coming up here. 
So, you know, try to understand the numbers and try to read into the numbers with the theory that I gave you so you can understand and have a deeper knowledge of what's going on with your client. Obviously, they're not sleeping enough. Obviously, they're not getting enough vitamins, amino acids, and they need to rest. Okay, how do I correct this now? There are different ways you can go around correcting this uh, and reducing their stress, apart from their daily activity because, you know, vitamins and their food intake, they have to take care of, but you have to inform them about it. Uh, fear, et cetera, and emotional, you know that later on we'll go into the NLP, let's say, and work on that. But from here, what do we do? We can either, um, you know, press start over and over again till we get our normal rectification, the highest number. Okay, and try to get these numbers as low as possible. But our focus mainly is to get the normal, the highest number. Or we can help it to get quicker results by sending, you know, the waves that are needed so that we do get the normal highest. That's what I usually do. Now, how do I do this? I can either click on the highest number here and test, treat, clicked items. So right by, it's doing a quick little zap on the clicked item. That is the theta. I'm sending theta waves to relax them, to create balance. Okay. It doesn't give you a rectification, but you can do it like, you know, three times. Three times is a good number. I like to do it three times. <laughs> or instead of doing it three times, you can click on the second item here. That's a two-minute zap. Let me show you. So by clicking the second uh, button here, stim brain wave form click two minutes. It's doing it's sending uh, a continuous theta wave therapy, brain wave training therapy with theta waves for two minutes. So this is very helpful, and we'll see how we'll do. Now, if a person is well-fed, drinks their water, doesn't take medication, you know, have, doesn't have very oily skin, and you know, they have. You make sure when you put the head harness that you know it's clean from makeup, so you have good reactions here, readings and reactions, and sending, you know. The, the wave patterns that you want to send uh, more distinctly and better, okay? Um, you'll get better results that way and quicker results. I've had a person a rectify, that is, have the normal, the highest within one time, other times, you know, when they have issues, it can take 10 times. It can take even more times. But I have noticed, I have noticed that the more I work a person, the quicker they do get rectified. A person that I have worked a lot, they're used to receiving uh, these um, frequencies and relaxing frequencies. I've noticed that they get quicker results, better, faster. Okay. A person that I may put on for the first time may then even with after 10 times may not rectify. So, you know, be patient. A uh, person may not rectify from the beginning. It's natural. But, you know, whatever you do, it is training them. Okay, so let's do a quick start again and see what will come up now. Remember. Our brain is in constant activity. So, you know, these numbers change constantly. There are response, there are, our brain is reacting to different responses, noises, lights, thoughts, memory, electrical pulses. So this will take a few minutes, and not a few minutes, but just a little while. But I'm very interested to see.
Okay, great. So uh, what's this telling us? Again, let's see, mineral deficiencies coming up. There we go, amino acids still coming up. Okay, manic, etc. personality dysfunction. Okay, so these things are coming up. Um, the brain waves, though, are better since we worked on them. Okay, that's a good indication. The normal is better. It was before at 68, now it's at 98. But we still want the highest number epileptic forms coming up. Does it mean that the person has epilepsy, but there are some kind of pikes, spikes going up there? Maybe, you know, mindlessness or, you know, something's going on there, uh, some kind of response. Um, and, you know, deep brain asymmetry. So, you know, when these things come up, you have them in mind, jot them down. All this information is information of where you can go later on. But let's do it. What, let's do something else here. Let's do the highest number here is beta now, 99. Let's do a, a quick treatment there for beta. And again, we'll do the start and see how we'll, we will do. Okay. I will. I did the uh, treat on the clicked item beta, but I would like to put alpha here and normal. Why? Because I want to help them relax. Of course, everything here stabilizes. It's, you know, anything that you're doing is stabilizing them, with whichever one you pick, because they are all borderline at this point. Okay, but since I did the beta beforehand, that's why I chose the alpha at 98. The next one, possibly, I could choose the immature slow thought since it's at 97, you know. Um, send different frequencies and uh, brain waves so you can relax your client and try to achieve your normal response and not get other responses here. So let's see what comes up now. Okay, seems like we're getting better responses now. Now we have three items over 100. 90 is at normal. Uh, there we go. It's like I said it before. It's like it heard me. Anyhow, I wanted to do the image with slow thought before. And at the normal, let's see here, vitamin deficiency, mineral deficiency. Again, there's an issue with that so you know definitely tell a person you know they need to fix their diet to have a better you know they need to give their brain brain food okay so let's do a quick quick click here treatment for the image with slow thought get those frequencies going and more balanced in the brain and let's again do the start. So this is like the third time, I think, uh, or the fourth, I don't, I haven't counted. You know, I'm saying it may take even 10 times, but I have noticed that with a client uh, that I have seen over and over again, and they're used to these brainwave trainings, they can even uh, rectify within one time, especially if they're doing everything correctly in their daily lives. The, these therapies are very important when you're dealing with a child or a person with, you know, epileptic uh, forms. And remember, as I've, I know you've seen uh, many of my previous videos or the technician uh, certification course that we take, this is part of our startup plan. So, you know, it's very important to relax the client. Um, okay, so we're we're close. We're still at 96. We want to get this over 100. Again, though, seems like uh, we're having an issue again with the brain waves. Let's do the alpha this time. Let's do a quick treat. I'll do it three times this time. Instead of going into a two-minute, 
just for um, you know practical reasons, uh, since we're on video, do it three times. But if I was in a normal um, uh, therapy, I would do it for two minutes here, trying you know to relax the client to get normal forms here. Okay, let's do it a third time here, and we'll press start again. So this will be the fifth time, I think. Okay, so let's press start. So if, if let's say you go to the fifth time and it still hasn't uh, rectified, I would then go into the attention deficit brain fatigue leap here and do more of a more in-depth um, therapy, trying to release their stress and, you know, um, help the brain to function better. And then I will come back here. Let's see now what comes up and we'll see how we decide to go. Remember that our device now, because it's newer, faster, stronger, more sensitive, and higher, um, uh, it, it has a, a, a higher precision, okay? So uh, that's why it is harder to rectify because the precision is more exact, logical, right? So, okay, great. The normal has gone over 100 now, but we still need to correct these. We see injury issue here, attention deficit, etc. Let's go here to the attention deficit brain fatigue and leap to help, you know, further do therapy and we'll come back, calculate and continue. Let's go to the first button here that says dyslexia dysphonia repair to repair any possible injury, attention deficit, etc. That is coming up. So scanning the brain and at the same time doing neurofeedback therapy, brainwave training. Sixty-two percent. Let's do it one more time, and it gives us an indication where what has been rectified and what is still in inflammation. Okay, inflammation of corpus callosum. There we go for the asymmetry issue. Corpus callosum is, you know, right in the middle. So maybe that the inflammation is causing, you know, a um, non-communication between left and right uh, hemispheres. Temporarily, okay, it's most of them are rectified. We still have some inflammation, but the rectification is at 100. Okay, so we can go into the second one, leap general learning repair. That's a second, and there's a third button that comes up after you press on the leap. It's the treat HDID for attention deficit and hyperreactivity. Again, 100%, that's great. So let's do also the treat HDID. Okay, and again, 100% with some inflammation around here. Okay, and you know, you can jot these down. Uh, reticular formation, hypothalamus, frontal lobe, wherever there's inflammation and load them on your piggybacks and body viewer, let's say iridology, etc. So let's go back here and do a start again. 
okay, and see how we do. I would like at the same time, since we're doing this, to load the body viewer. Of course, remember that you would have to go through the risk profile first so that, you know, all your uh, piggybacks are loaded correctly. But, you know, I'm just showing you now uh, what you can do. Let's turn on the brain functions and set all and let all of them being loaded in the piggyback as an extra therapy in the background, helping your front therapy work. Piggybacks always help us, you know, do that added focus. That's what the meaning of piggyback is, that added focus, extra electrical uh, therapy going out. There we go. Look, look. Oh, we're almost there. We're just one off ampl amplitude disorder again. Okay, um, okay, now seems like, you know, we, there again, the vitamin deficiency is coming up still. So how about if we put delta and now this normal and do one more start? Keep your fingers crossed. I hope we did it. Let's make sure our, yeah, it's working in the background, our piggyback. Maybe we can also put iridology and put brainwave training here and get that extra added bonus of therapy. There we go. Great. Okay. Oops, that's finished. So maybe... You know, well, that's running. You could put trauma injury for the brain or also, you know, weakness of chi to give more energy there or immune or, you know, anti-inflammation will help as well. Let's see, 106, 110. We're, we're getting there. We are getting there. Personality dysfunction is coming up still. Let's put alpha here since that's the highest reaction now, and do start, and let's do some piggyback, your psychological, maybe, you know, emotions, maybe anxiety, maybe also compulsive was coming up as well, you know. Relaxation. Ah, left and right brain stability. Have that running. So all these things loaded in the background, in the piggyback, will help your front... Um, therapy to work even stronger. Look, even degeneration is coming up two times. I think I, I, did I choose degeneration here? Degeneration there. So everything we've loaded there, piggyback, around the brain, around trauma, psychological issues, you know, it's working to help the EEG reactions. One oh four, one thirteen. Still slow waves. Okay, so you see, you see how we get there. You know, it, it always depends on how much time you have with your client. If you have time and you really want to rectify this, um, you know, you can do this. But you know, over and over again. But you know, the point is, is that. Even with the therapies that I've done, I'm much better off than when I've started. So, and you still have future therapies with the clients. So whatever you've done, you've done something and you've done something better. You see the normal is much better than before. And even the alpha waves and the beta waves and theta waves are, you know, they're better. So let's do it just one more time, <laughs> just one more time and see where we go and, you know, at that point, you know, you can say, okay, I've done enough. I'm going to do more therapies anyhow. And, um, you know, even in the NLP and, you know, all the other therapies will help relax the client. But, you know, you can follow up in the following therapies. You can write down in their file how many times you did this. Maybe we, we went 
10 times, okay? And see the next time, how many times did it take? I've noticed that each time it'll take less and less times for it to have the normal, the highest number. That is what we want. And remember, it doesn't have to be, you know, a lot higher, even one point higher than the others is enough, okay? To show that it is normal. The normal is higher than all the others. Ideally, of course, you know, we want all the other numbers less than 100, but okay, it's no problem. Now at this point, I have, the numbers are lower. They're not so high, they're not 110, they're, they're 106, okay, it's, they're better than before, okay? So at this point, I would leave it. If I was in a therapy with so many times, I would leave it. I would tell them, I would give them instructions with their vitamins, etc., and I will jot it down. So the second therapy, see what comes up, how it goes, how it corrects, and how it, you know, how you go along. Um, my uh, also um, uh, suggestion after doing this, definitely go into your nutrition panel and increase their absorption of their minerals and amino acids and their, you know, digestion, work on their digestion, work on their intake. Because, you know, some people have a good intake, but for some reason, maybe they're too toxic and maybe they're not absorbing the minerals or their vitamins correctly. So you have to work that as well. So depending on how you do, uh, how you progress in each session, it'll take less time for your normal to go up to 100 and, and to be the highest number, the normal number, okay? That's how you work with this panel, okay? If you have any questions, I'm open to any questions you have. If you have any ideas, if you want uh, further um, uh, webinars that you want me to, you know, uh, go into more detail, I would love to help you. No problem. Keep tuned. Keep tuned. We have in September, we'll be um, uh, announcing our technician certification. For those who have already taken technician, they will be going on to the specialist program. We'll be announcing uh, dates uh, after vacation. Uh, so we will be starting our certification courses again. Certification courses are very important for us, remember, and also for the technician. Even though you may know all the panels and you've had basic navigation, technician is very important, not only for the certification, but also for a deeper understanding for all the panels. It's always good to have a refresher course, okay? So have a fantastic, fantastic vacation and see you in September again. Lots of love and best wishes.